In this video, I'm going to show you how to train the cell pose model and then uh, segment nuclei with this uh, train model. So let's go to the cell pose uh, Jupyter notebook. So again, we have a training and a running uh, notebook. So I'm going to open the training notebook. It's still organized the same way. So I'm going to first load uh, everything we need to train the cell pose model and then run uh, the second panel with the parameters and so similarly to the other one so I'm, I'm going to first define the training directory uh, which is going to be a training and then validation directory which is going to be validation all right so um, again the last parameter would be used if i don't have any validation directory and i would take 20 percent of the data in the training di directory to use it in validation but here i have validation directory so this will be ignored um, we can change the learning rate i'm going to keep it to that value but obviously uh, it'd be a good idea to try with several uh, values for the learning rate. I'm going to change the number of epochs to 100 because just, you know, for a demonstration. So the batch size can be higher here with cell pose. And even though GPU is not that powerful, so I'm going to uh, keep it at 8. And the diameter mean for the in pixels for the, for the nuclei. So I'm going to use it as 30 because even though in confocal images is certainly less than that in, in wide field images, it's a bit uh, more than that. Uh, so I'm going to uh, keep it at, at 30. But this, you know, depending on the nuclear nuclei size, you can definitely change this value. Um, to uh, try to improve your results. And now I'm going to train uh, the model. So I'm going to run this one. It's going to be uh, training a cell pose model with all these parameters. And the first step here is actually to compute the flows because uh, a cell, uh, you know, cell, uh, cell pose um, is considering uh, flows for the nuclei. And that's uh, for, for the cells, depending on what you are trying to segment. And that's what is actually um, estimated. So it's doing for all of them. I can uh, maybe show you what it looks like. Uh, so if I go to my uh, GitHub folder here, if I go to cell pose and data sets, nuclei segmentation. So here in training, we have the images and so let's open the first one and that's part of a wide field image if i now go to masks so this is what i had for the training so a different intensity for each nucleus and from that uh, segmentation uh, for that you know, segmentation mask this segmentation mask it computes a flow so here we have actually um, several things so everything is put together so if i just um split all the channels you see what you have so you actually have the same thing than before so it considered it as a, as a uh, color image that's why it's all like this but let's go back to grains so that's exactly what what it, we had here the second one is actually um the same, so the same one like before, but in that case you have uh, so one where you have nuclei and zero where you don't have so like a probability map for nuclei, and then you have flows in x and flows in in y. Okay. And so the good thing is that if when you train your model, so the first time it's gonna um, compute all these flows, flow images, and then if you retrain the model on the same data, it will uh, it, it will find those flow uh, images, and so it won't compute them again. So if I go back here, uh, so you see it started the training, and it's already up to 60 epochs, so it's, it's actually almost down. Um, so it's pretty fast uh, with cell pose. I see one one epoch is uh, 
So first one is a bit longer, but then you see it's about two seconds per epoch. And so here we can uh, look at all the values. So I couldn't put uh, this, um, so I couldn't code it so we can use TensorBall to look at these values because the way it's encoded doesn't allow it to, to do it. So, uh, you know, we could do some post-processing, get back these values here. Uh, one thing you can do is just look at your loss here. You see that it's decreasing and your uh, loss uh, for the validation data is also decreasing. And that's what you could use. So as I understand, uh, it's not perfect, um, but there was no easy solution to do it. So that's actually what I do myself, I look at these values um, this way. And so here we see that it's still decreasing. And so uh, probably we could, def sorry, we could definitely try more epochs. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty fast. So that wouldn't be very costly to try 200, 300, 500 epochs. So you see now it's down. So we're going to... Um, directly use this model to uh, segment uh, nuclei. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to open the running notebook, load everything we need, and then load the parameters. So as you can see, it's always very similar. I'm going to go in uh, my data set. I'm going to select the test images here. Uh, the model is going to be the one we just uh, trained, this one. And I'm going to uh, actually create, uh, so I already opened, so it should still be there here. If I go back uh, in the data set here, I'm going to create a new folder that I'm going to call results. So I can actually select it here for my output, uh, for the output of the processing. So here, I'm going to select results. I'm going to give the same size for the diameter. And I'm going to uh, use uh, these values. So you could definitely change them um, in practice for this particular data set. That's what gave the best results. But that won't uh, give the best result for any uh, data set. And now we can process them. So it tells you it's doing the first one and then the second and so on. So it's a little bit longer, for example, than Stardust, just because you have to do the inverse um, transformation from flows to, to mask. But still, it's, it's pretty fast. And you can look at the results now. So if I open an FG, that's for a confocal image. That's for a wide field image. We can use GlassB and DAR for both of them to better visualize uh, nuclei. And we're going to open, uh, oops, sorry, this here image look at table GlassB and DAR. can open the corresponding images to see how good it looks like. And um, as shown in the paper, that's a Probably not as efficient as a Stardust or Mask of CNN. Then though it's already pretty, uh, pretty interesting. And again, you could improve the results by having, you know, using more epochs, uh, tweaking the parameters, and those parameters work pretty well for this uh, particular data set. Uh, actually, that's that were the best results I got from uh, this for this data set. But more epochs actually helps. Uh, but you can see that, you know, for example, this this one is definitely not just one nucleus, and so we have other and you know discrepancies like this. If we look at the results and the count focal, oops, I closed, it, so I'm just gonna open it again. And um, you know, it's it's it's. Definitely not bad, but uh, you know, here we should have two, for example. Uh, here is definitely not one. So, uh, 